May I call out a quick, right. can I call out a quick hi to my uh, body pump buddy Anita is here. All right, well, hello everyone and welcome to the San Anselmo Library's virtual event today, Fall and Mature Citrus Gardening with Marin Master Gardener Joe Jennings. I'm Sariana, the Adult Services Librarian at the San Anselmo Library. And before we begin, I'd like to thank the Friends of the Library and the Library Parcel Tax for sponsor, always supporting the library. There are a few technical things I'd like to mention before we begin. Everyone will remain muted throughout the presentation. If you have a question for Joe, please type it into the chat box at the bottom or top of your screen, depending on where you have the functions located and what device you are using. All questions will be answered at the end of the presentation, but feel free to ask questions throughout using the chat box. I recommend selecting the full screen and speaker view settings. This can be found in the top right corner of your screen or on the left hand side, depending on your device. During the presentation, you might see some faces on the right side in a column. You can choose to minimize this column to, or just show the speaker's face using the horizontal lines at the top of the column. If you do minimize this, you get to see the full picture of, this, of the slide instead of having a ton of faces on the side. This program does count towards one continuing education credit for all Ms. Uh, Marin Gardeners. And thank you for your patience and understanding during this program. Technology can be fickle and we are all still learning what we can and can't do with Zoom. If you have any questions or need help with Zoom, you can email me at slayland at townofsananselmo.org. It's the same email you use to register for this event, or you can use the chat box and send me a personal chat. Our speaker today is Joe Jennings. Joe has been a Marin Master Gardener since 2012, and he teaches classes on tomatoes, year-round vegetables, container vegetables, and citrus trees. He's a Seattle native and currently lives in Marksburg. He's a graduate of Whitman College and the University of Washington. Welcome, Joe. Before I start, I want to warn everyone, I was pruning today and managed to cut my pruning hand with the pruning shear which is not easy. So I, I want you to know I'm a real master gardener. I actually hurt myself today in the line of duty. Um, I wanna thank you all for being here. Uh, what I would say is I'll, I will pick up questions sort of as we go through by topic. And if you have a question, like we just got one already on size of container, there's a section on containers and we'll handle it when we get to containers. But I wanna thank you all for being here. Um, Today's focus is primarily on trees between five and 60 years old. I will touch on um, kind of fall maintenance for any citrus tree and also replacement strategies. But the core of this is how do we take care of older citrus trees? Um, UC Master Gardeners are part of the UC Cooperative Extension Office. Our job is to help transfer technology and knowledge from the horticultural schools to citizens. Um, we have a website, the Marin Master, MarinMG.UCANR. It's, it's not obvious. Um, we have a phone and an email at our help desk. Our office is closed for obvious reasons, but uh, you can get help um, through email or the phone. And we also have a leaflet, which is very helpful. Um, so, uh, before we start, a little background on citrus. Um, what you should kind of keep in mind is um, all citrus come from basically one single genetic source in Southeast Asia. Um, it broke into two families at some point in the development. The oldest citrus that's been found are citron seeds in the Middle East from 500 BCE. The oldest lemon seed was found in Rome. They believe that uh, lemons and citrus were used on the spice route as trading, um, something that was transported and traded up and down the spice route. Um, when you um, and I, when you think about this plant, it's a perennial which means it lives for more than two years. It's an evergreen, which means it's always in leaf. In truth, it's a subtropical plant, so it wants at least six hours of sunlight in February, and it requires heat to produce sugar. And uh, depending upon the variety you have, you can have single or multiple blooms a year. 
the tree has an interesting characteristic called alternative bearing, which is you can have a heavy crop one year and a light crop the next year. And the fruit, there's a wide spectrum of how long it takes citrus fruit to uh, become edible, uh, how wide the harvest season is. Um, honestly, it's better to store fruit on the tree because the moment you pick the fruit, the citrus ethylene starts to decay. Um, there's also this curious thing that the um, citrus gina does, which is it produces more blooms than it needs. So at some point it will drop a bunch of blooms. Then it produces more immature fruit than it wants. And it literally edits the fruit on the tree by dropping it. Uh, and then it pushes to production the fruit that it wants to remain. So I get a lot of questions about blossom drop and uh, immature fruit drop. That's actually the tree doing its own self thinning. It's very normal. M most of us bought homes with citrus trees already planted. Uh, in reality, a lot of them are the wrong tree in the wrong place. Um, and the soil in Marin is terrible. So what citrus trees want is well-drained soil. So you, you're pretty much gonna spend the whole time you have a citrus tree in your yard, adding compost to try and break up the clay and create better drainage and feed the tree. In addition, if you have a tree in the middle of a lawn, you wanna pull the lawn away from the tree preferably out to the drip line because the grasses and, and heaven weeds or ornamentals all detract from the tree. Um, so when I look at this, the system I think about in gardening is I grow the soil and the soil grows the plant. And in citrus, it's the same thing. Regardless of what soil you start with, you can build good soil but you have to watch the weeds, the grasses, and the ornamentals under the, within the drip line. And you have to annually keep working it to keep building it. And about the drip line, um, citrus trees actually have, unlike some trees with a deep tap root, citrus trees are, tend to be shallowly rooted and out broadly. So when you look at your drip line, of a mature tree, you should assume that the actual root structure goes out twice as wide. And so if you're watering at the drip line, um, the idea is you're putting up to 10 gallons a month of water into the ground. And you're trying to do that in a way that promotes root development. And I'll go that into that more when we talk about planting new trees. Increasingly, I've become avid about having good um, weed-free mulch two inches away from the trunk, one to two inches thick, all the way around the tree. It retains water. If, it, if you're doing the weeding, that improves growth. And you just be careful that when you're weeding, you're not hacking at the weeds with a hoe because that can cut roots. And then the last thing is, um, personally, I, I believe that we have to think in terms of quarterly feeding of, of citrus fertilizer, uh, because citrus trees have a whole string of things that go wrong if they don't get all the trace nutrients that they need. So the easiest way to do it is to add compost around the soil to help build the soil, and then on top of that, to add citrus fertilizer to make sure that the tree gets all the trace nutrients it needs. So before I go on, are there any questions just about that? I know that's a lot of stuff very quickly, but any questions on just that first round of things? Okay. Um, so first thing, this is not the time to prune. <laughs> uh, Joe, um, yes. Joe, sorry to interrupt. There is a question in the chat box. Um, is it too late to fertilize? Oh, no, 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 no. Um, 
I like to make sure that I've done it before the rains start. I think it's safe to bet <laughs> you still have another couple weeks to a month. So I, I try to pick, you know, the first day of the quarter or pick a date um, and then every three months go out and, and apply fertilizer. Uh, these are very heavy feeders. And even if you were late, do it and catch up and then get onto a schedule. I just put it in my calendar. Right. And then another question from um, Maureen, are you going to talk about potted trees in this presentation? Yes, it's coming up. Great. Any other questions? Okay. Pruning. Um, if you're an orchard grower, um, most orchard people say that citrus trees need the least pruning of any fruit tree. Um, and I put here um, some examples of things that happen. You can get these extremely dense trees like the image on the left, or you can get trees that have been over pruned and suddenly have tons of water shoots coming up. Or you can see a tree that someone has tried to lower the top and all of a sudden the tree thinks it's eight feet tall, the owner thinks it's about four feet tall, and right now the tree is winning. So when you think about pruning a citrus tree, um, some of the rules that you hear about pruning don't apply, and I'll go through that. You wanna be doing pruning primarily in spring and summer after the frost damage, danger is over, before the next growth cycle, um, and primarily, it's, it's these trees, you, you'll get a feel for it when you're between seasons and between cycles. Where it gets difficult is in Meyer lemons. Well, frankly, all the lemons, because they're in production year round. Be really careful not to over prune. Um, if you're pruning for shaping, do it at the end of spring. Light thinning of the tops of trees produces new fruit wood, but what if you over prune, it creates water shoots. And removing unwanted branching, your real goal in pruning is to keep the shape and the branching structure integrity going. Um, if you ever see a tree that's been over pruned, within a couple of weeks, you've got one angry tr citrus tree pushing back out growth to make up for what's been taken away. Um, Master Gardeners is going to put together a citrus tree pruning class. I found that if I go into more depth on pruning, honestly, it can be an hour. So before we leave pruning, are there any questions on pruning? Because it's such a big deal. Okay. Um, harvesting. Um, Joe, there is, a, yeah. I'm so sorry, there is a question from Jenny in the chat. Um, she apparently killed her Meyer lemon by over pruning, but did not get suckers. But you killed it? Wow, that's impressive. I haven't met anyone who's killed one. Um, um, what's the question then? I. Um, I'm not sure, Jenny, what your question is. I, I, my condolences to your Meyer, but um, maybe it wasn't a question. Maybe it was just a comment. Yeah, I haven't killed one Thank yet, you. but I, you know, I've, I've, I've certainly irritated the heck out of some lemon trees in the past. Um, so, one of the things to stay on top of is harvesting. If you start to have fruit drop. It draws rats and squirrels to your trees. So I try to make sure that I stay on top of harvesting when things are ripe. So we have a Washington navel in our side yard and I can tell that the it's gorgeous fruit is already coming in and we'll probably be harvesting starting in December. I try to stay on top of all of our lemon trees. We have a Eureka and a Meyer lemon. Um, and that means pretty much every week I go out and feel fruit to see which is the ripest and pick them. 
um, you, you should be doing harvesting of limes and grapefruits in January to April. Um, you can leave fruit on the tree, but the riper the fruit gets, it seems to be the greater the rat magnet. So I advise people to stay on top of harvesting. It's a key form of maintenance. Now, this tree on the left, um, let me uh, exhibit A of the, the perils of purchasing a, a nearly 100 year old home in Marksburg. My neighbor, Tony, owns this home that she moved into 35 years ago. The lemon on the left was mature when she moved in. We started trying to get it to come back because it had been yellowing and the fruit production was down and the leaves were dropping. And I finally, just as a test, cut one of the branches through to see what was going on. There was about an inch of wood left and the rest had rotted out. The tree was dying of old age. So a lot of you have trees that might be very old at the end of the life cycle or are full size standard orchard trees that are up against your house where it's way too big a tree for your property for where it is. It may be not safe from a fire standpoint. And a lot of people, or the ever popular people who tell me, I bought this house 30 years ago. I've never liked the taste of this fruit. And yet the tree is still there. I'm now giving you permission. If you have the wrong tree in the wrong place, you can remove it and plant something else. If it's a variety you don't eat, a size that's too large, a tree that's too old, or where the rootstock's taken over, or if it doesn't get enough sun, doesn't have enough space, has drainage issues, or is too close to the house and roof, or too cold a location, remove the old tree and plant a variety you like. And frankly, every time I try to plant a new tree, I go through the, starting with a clean piece of paper, what's the optimal place in the yard to plant this tree? The reason I bring that up is some of our citrus trees were planted when the houses were built and large trees have grown up around them. And so they are no longer in all day sun. So you need to think about it each time you go at bat. So what's a replacement strategy for a citrus tree? This is the most basic thing to start with. I get out of a measuring tape, stand in the yard for a long time to try and figure out what's the sunniest, hottest spot I have. And it could be against a wall of the house or against the fence or along the driveway. And then I take a measuring tape from the center of that spot and I measure in all directions. And if you have a, an area that's under 10 feet square, 10 by 10, you wanna be in a dwarf. If you have something about 10 to 15 feet square, maybe a semi-dwarf, but I can't think of very many properties of residential homes in Marin that wants a standard orchard sized tree because I don't think many of us should be getting up on ladders to harvest them. So this is the first thing to think about with both your mature trees and getting a new tree is, golly, do I have the room for this thing? And the problem is if the logic in your head is, oh, I'm going to keep this pruned so it fits in this space, even though it's a standard tree, you're gonna be doing a lot of pruning because the tree will wanna to grow to its full size. Here's a short list, <laughs> and uh, you can get it in uh, the Pam Pierce Golden Gate Gardening book. You can also get it on the Marin Master Gardener website. Of all the citrus that grow well in the Bay Area, from grapefruits and kumquats and lemons and limes and mandarins and pomelos and sweet oranges, and the key thing to watch are the far right three columns, uh, except for espalier. Which ones do well in cool climates? Which ones can you purchase a dwarf? And which ones do well in containers? The classic most constrained case is, I wanna have a citrus in a container and I live in Mill Valley where the fog comes in and it's cool. 
that gets you to a short list of trees that do well. And you can look across and see them. You look at the wherever it says container, yes, dwarf, and cool tolerant. That would be your list of plants. Um, here's a different source, but it's the same data. So any question on variety selection before we move on? Um, Joe, there's actually quite a few questions from that. From <laughs> I thought so. So I'm going to go through them. Um, one is from uh, uh, JMT. When and where will information on the uh, O or the pruning be made available? So we're kind of going over that, right? The 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 pruning class is in development, so they'll post it when they're ready to to have it. Okay, great. And then Jenny asks, what is the lifespan of a Meyer lemon tree? It's about 40 to 50 years. Um, the, lemon, the Meyer lemon is a product of the U.S. Department of Agriculture in the 1950s and 60s. A man named Meyer, no surprise there, went to China and found a, a variety that he thought he could adapt to America. Thin skin, few seeds, high juice, sweet. And... Um, it was introduced in the early 60s, and it's one of the most popular citrus varieties in California. And Gabriel has a question, um, or maybe it's not a question, hold on. Uh, I grew a grapefruit tree from a seed, from a grapefruit, not from the seed store, but it never bloomed in five or six years. Do you know why? Uh, I don't. Um, <laughs> the grapefruit is tricky because it actually needs high heat and humidity. And the only grapefruit variety that grows even remotely well here is called Oro Blanco. Um, and if you want to grow grapefruit, I would just go get an Oro Blanco and replace the other tree because there aren't that many places in the country that grapefruits grow well. And we're about as far north as a grapefruit will go. Uh, so. Um, since you don't know the variety and it hasn't bloomed, that would tell me this is not the right place for it. Okay, thank you. And uh, Vicki has a question. Um, I hope you'll talk about reasons why a citrus tree does not bear fruit. Uh, she has an orange tree that has never produced since I put it in the tin, it put it, put it in the ground. It sits near a motion sensor light and I've heard it may confuse the tree but I'm not sure why it won't produce or grow much for that matter. Um, I hate to say this, but I have found um, trees that should work that never did, and, and we don't know why, that are in locations that are either too wet, too cold, or too dark, don't get enough sunlight. So I need to know more, but uh, usually if you've gotten no production, in four or five years, I a pick a different place and pick a different tree. Okay. And Jenny has another question. How do you protect the tree during rare, extremely hot days in San Francisco? Well, that's an interesting question. So it depends on the size of the tree. We didn't used to have these problems, but I have seen people put up um, garden umbrellas for smaller trees. Uh, I've seen people use containers and wheel the trees into the east side of their property so that it's shaded from the sun in the late afternoon. And I've also seen increasingly people use what's the equivalent of sailcloth and put up posts and try and block the sun at the hottest part of the days. So there are a bunch of strategies. The easiest one to implement is find a location uh, if you're planting a new tree and protect against late afternoon sun. Because that highest temperature part of the day is between four and seven uh, in the summer here in Marin. Thank you. And there's one more question from JMT. How well do Lisbon lemons do in Marin? You know, it's interesting. I. Um, Personally, I haven't grown one. I've grown Eurekas and, and, and Myers. Um, 
the thing I've seen is that um, they're certainly on all the lists and um, you know, people talk about them as a very successful tree. So um, I would have no reason not to try it. I think that was all the questions for now. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Um, the thing about this list, these two lists, is we really do have quite a palette to choose from. And the thing that's in your favor is with climate change, the temperatures are getting warmer here. So more varieties should do better. And um, I would expect to see more oranges come online. So we'll see how this goes over the next decade. So just to summarize, a tree needs six hours of light in February. It needs enough space and height to grow. Um, you need to think in terms of when this is full size, how am I going to harvest? Um, the soil should be nutrient rich that drains well. They have high water demands. Um, you should be planting a new tree if you're going to do it. October to March is the time to do it. And I fertilize, you know, quarterly and I add compost every fall before the rainy season. So about container gardens, um, just for the last eight years of teaching in Marin, about a third of the people I talk to are container gardeners, sometimes more. And in the chart that I gave you, you can see the ones that do well in a container. You want to think in terms of a 15 to 25 gallon pot, at least 24 inches across at the top and 24 inches deep. Um, you need a fair amount of soil for a healthy tree. So a smaller pot, it isn't, it isn't a good idea. In addition, um, I stupidly put a tree in one of those beautiful pots that have the narrow neck. And then when I wanted to add compost and work with the soil, you can't get at it. So the wider the mouth of the pot, the better. And just make sure that there's drainage holes because the trees don't want to sit in wet water, wet ground, and, they, and you shouldn't be using a dish underneath them to catch the water because that promotes, you can get insects and you can get root rot, so you don't want to do that. Um, that having been said, in, in my wife's family in Italy, they have citrus trees on their patios that have been there for 50, 60 years and done very well. So you can have a high production citrus in a container on a patio. You just have to manage it closer. So what are you managing? Well, you want eight hours of sunlight or more a day which usually means a south or southwest facing space. You need to do year round watering uh, because we have winter droughts here now, which are weird, but we can go a month in the middle of the winter with no rain. So you have to sort of pay attention. Um, when you're watering a tree, you're watering the soil, not the tree or the top of the root ball. And the highest water demands are honestly there's a growth period, winter and spring, and then trying to get through the summer when it's producing fruit. So it's interesting to me, except for when it's actual rainy season, you leave irrigation on year round. Now, the other subtlety in container gardening for citrus is unlike if the tree was in the ground and you're doing deep watering where you could maybe run a soaker hose for an hour or two, in a container, as soon as the water starts running out the bottom, you're wasting water. So the trick is more frequent, shorter duration irrigation. More frequent, shorter duration irrigation. In other words, you're giving a little bit of water possibly every other day, um, and you want, just, you'll get a feel for it. How long can you run it before you see water running out the bottom? The soil use commercially available po outdoor potting mixes. And 
the things to watch for are as soon as you start to see roots peeking through the drainage holes, about every four to five years, you either need to repot into a bigger pot or roll the pot over, pull the plant carefully out onto plastic, pull the soil away, and prune away extra roots that are starting to push out, and then repot it with new soil. Fertilizing, um, I'm torn between these slow release fertilizers or monthly fertilizing in small quantities. Um, I'm not that careful. I'm not that comfortable with the stakes and those things. So the way to think about it though is the tree is getting no nutrients from the environment. You're it. So I would play with fertilizing, whether it's quarterly or monthly, how much you give, but you need to be thinking about how you're watering so that you're not fertilizing, then watering and having the nutrients go out the bottom of the pot. Does, does that make sense to everybody? Because container gardening is a wonderful thing, but it's, it, you know, to get a tree to look like that is tricky. You got to pay attention and be on it. Um, so any questions about container citrus gardening? Right. Uh, Joe, there is a question from Nancy uh, asking you to please elaborate on when and why citrus needs protection from hot sun. I thought citrus liked it hot. They can, you can, uh, actually there's a slide coming up. You can get sunburn. Um, and I've seen in some of the cooler areas in Marin along the coast, when we got to 110 degree temperatures, the trees kind of went into shock. So I think you're better off if you're in somewhere like Nevada where it's hot all summer, but in those cooler climates, um, you just have to pay attention. If your tree looks like it's not responding well to the super high heat, and I had that problem here in Marksburg this summer when it got up to 108 for a couple of days, then I, I literally rolled my patio umbrella out to protect my Meyer lemon that I planted two years ago. Other questions? Um, there's a question from Hallie in the chat. My Meyer lemons need to be transplanted now. Is this an okay time to do it? She yes. feels like it can't wait. So. Yes, yes. We're going into the rainy season, so this is actually the best time to do it. I think that was the questions for now. Okay. So um, if everybody should write down, just jot down IPM Davis, that's what you want to Google to get to this page, which is the UC Davis Integrated Pest Management page. And if you look at the little quadrant that says home and garden and turf and click on that and then click on citrus, they will show you everything that goes wrong with plants and trees in California. The first thing that I hear a lot about is uh, rats and squirrel problems. And um, there's just a whole detailed set of things to do, which basically boils down to don't let there be rotting fruit on the ground, harvest the, the ripe fruit when it's ready, and then you may have to and make sure that your tree is not connecting to the roof of your house. Because if you have roof rats, they're literally running out, grabbing a snack, and going back into your attic and you don't want that. So the whole area of invertebrates, I would go to IPM and look up for the type of critter you have, how to handle it. Um, likewise, um, the forecast is for more severe weather, which means more days of frost or nights of frost. Um, if you know a frost is coming and you think it will be you know, 29 degrees or less for half an hour during the night. Um, if you ha haven't planted a frost hardy type, then protect the tree by putting a cover over it. Um, this can be something as sophisticated as what's here, or it can be a sheet. Um, and then if you do have frost damage, remove frozen fruit the next morning 
but don't prune. Don't cut away damage because it can take several months before you know how damaged or that your tree isn't damaged. But people who immediately cut away what they think is frost damage actually can make it worse. So the first thing to worry about after critters is frost. And then we get to this sort of, how do I look at systemic problems? If you're getting fewer no flowers, that can be that they were over pruned. Fruit drop is normal, but we do have years where there's no, not no, but limited pollination. Small fruit, um, look for rootstock suckers, I've seen the most of. Lack of flavor is an over irrigation problem. There's a thin line between watering the tree enough and watering it so much that you're, the fruit's getting bigger and it's not as flavorful. If you're seeing split fruit, that can be inconsistent irrigation or what's called pot binding, i.e., the tree is in a container and it's just running out of space or nutrient deficiency. So, at a macro level, if you're seeing yellow leaf with, between the veins, this could be an iron deficiency. And this is why all of the things on this list, if you're maintaining a, a citrus fertilizer, you should not run into these problems. I have a problem right now with iron, and I have to get on it. I, it's one of my to-do lists after I hacked my finger this morning. Um, but you can go to the IPM and if your leaves are yellow or they're mottled or they're starting to drop, it's usually a, a trace element problem. Um, I, I, normally, if we were all in the same room, I would ask you how many of you are manure people <laughs> and you know who you are. Um, the good news with manure is it's a big charge of nitrates into the soil, which is great. The bad news with manures is they can be really full of salt. So if you are a manure person, you should use it sparingly, preferably right before the rainy season, so the rains will help soak it in and wash away the salts. Um, and if it isn't right before the rainy season and you are using manure, then make sure to water heavily after you put it out and avoid manure that's not well composted because ammonia affects the roots, it hurts them. And then the last thing before we get to specific diseases, this leaf curl problem, um, this is what I was seeing this summer in a lot of, in two of my citrus trees and neighbors, the, the plant um, is basically starting to deal with a lack of water and heat by reducing the nutrients and, and, and water to the leaves. And so you see this curling. So the solution is you deep soak the soil around a big tree at the, at the drip line, and then you start to irrigate once a week until it kind of recovers. So before I go into specific diseases, were there any questions about sort of the macro level problems? Um, there is a question from Nancy in the chat. Uh, com it is, it's common to see yellow citrus leaves in winter. She's heard this because citrus has trouble absorbing nitrogen in cold water. Is this true? And if so, is there a remedy? You know, I've never heard that before. Um, I'm go look at the Wren Master Gardener site to see if you find that or at UC Davis. I've never heard that problem. Um, that's a new one on me. I'll have to look it up. Any other questions? I think that was all the questions. Oh, wait, Jenny has one. Um, uh, sorry. Ech. Sorry. Ech. Yes, Jenny has a question. I have some leaves that curl from the tip towards the base of the leaves. Is this, there's lots of blooms though. Is that, is that um, a healthy? I it, you know, um, leaf curl, I, I keep an eye on, but if everything else is going well, 
it could be just the, the nature of your tree. But if you see this um, kind of curling and then dulling of the color and it starts to dry out, then you've got a real irrigation problem. Um, it could be just it was a hot day, but if it continues and starts to look like this, up your water. Uh, Gabriel has a question about that. Uh, leaf curl in containers, how often would you water? You know, I, it, everybody's, the, the joy of containers is that you can do things in interesting trees and plants and interesting spaces. The thing is you get very much into very almost hyper local problems. So um, I don't know if watering every day makes sense. I wouldn't think it would, but because you're trying to get the water into the tree and you're worried about, and by the way, there's much greater evaporation from a container, a clay container than a plastic one. I, you know, I don't know, I would play with it because it, in the height of the summer when it's so hot, um, I would have mulch at the top of my container to, to hang onto the water, but I might be watering every other day or try every day during the hottest times of the year. That's not a bad idea. Any other questions? Yes, uh, Gabriel asks, um, are black plastic containers a no-no? Oh no, they're a yes, yes. In fact, um, okay, here's the dirty secret. They are ugly, but if you're in a cool climate, they retain heat. So that's very cool. Um, so uh, I helped um, a friend put a garden in in West Marin, and we put the citrus trees in these ugly big 25 gallon plastic containers along a fence line, and they just thrived. They were they're great. So. And then some people use black plastic containers and put them in a wooden box or a clay pot. So that's another trick you can do. But no, I mean, they're ugly, but they really do a great job. I shouldn't say ugly. They're a little visually challenged, but do a great job. Sorry. Other questions? Okay. Um, so here's the problem. Um, we are always on the lookout for new insects. And the one right now to look at is this. It's called the citrus psyllid. And what it does is it, it, it basically brings a disease into the citrus groves and it's already present in Southern California. And one of them has been found here in Marin, I guess, two years ago. If you start to see this kind of um, action right on the new growth, where there's a little critter growing there, uh, it's a little brown insect, um, call the exotic pest hotline listed here, and they'll come out and take a look and trap it uh, because it's killing the trees. So this is a serious one. Uh, less serious, but actually more systemic. If you're in a new development in Marin, and there aren't that many anymore, but if you were, that they cut down an oak grove to put in houses, there can be this oak root fungus called Amarillia. And um, what happens is your trees get started, and after a few years, suddenly they stop growing, and there's a dieback and yellowing of leaves and leaf drop. And the problem is this virus is in the soil and it's picked it up and there's basically nothing to do. Once you know you've got this, the you know, only thing to do is pull the tree out and plant something different. So if you think you might have this problem in a new house, in a new development, or anywhere with oak trees around you, call the uh, Master Gardener office for help. As you get into fall and winter, if we have a wet winter, you might see this fungal pathogen called botrytis. 
and you'll see dead buds and sort of twig and branch gamosis and scarring of the fruit, these bumps. It's a fungal pathogen that thrives in cool, wet conditions. So make sure you're not over watering, make sure that you prune off the dead branches and remove the damaged fruit and try and keep an eye on your fruit so that it's harvested promptly, but not when it's wet. Um, this won't kill you or the tree, but it's, it disfigures the fruit and it's problematic. We in Marin have a lot of scale. Um, and so you'll see these critters on the branches of a citrus tree and that they're hardened shells and they're sucking insects. And so they are attaching to bark and fruit and leaves and you can control them with ants um, or horticultural oils. So I would, if you see this on your tree, immediately go to IPM and look at all the different ways to address it. All of us have citrus bud mite. I am sorry. It just comes with the territory in Marin. And you can tell when you see those weird pieces of fruit that look like your old relatives. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. Anyway, if you have deformed foliage or blossoms or fruit, this is the indication of a bud mite. The fact is it won't kill the tree, but it really makes for ugly fruit. So the moment you see this, get it off the tree and out of the garden, not in your compost, out, because it, it spreads. So you want to get rid of it. So, um, goodness, I hope I, I gave you a sense of sort of for mature trees, the stand back um, thing to think about when you're thinking about these trees is if you have a tree that um, is healthy and you love the fruit and, and it's not so tall that you can't pick it and um, it's easy to manage, great. Just take care of it. If you have a tree that was there when you moved in or you planted and, and it's too big or produces a fruit you don't like or worse yet, it doesn't produce anything, really look at what are my options in terms of other tr fruit trees, you know, other citrus, what would go well there, um, and change it out. And then frankly, if you're a container uh, gardener like me, um, always be thinking, you know, maybe I should be switching this up and getting a container plant in. The trick to these 50 to 60, five to 60 year old trees is frankly, they're probably gonna outlive us. But if it's the wrong tree, or you don't like the fruit, or it doesn't produce, or it's too tall, for heaven's sakes, life is short. Swap it out, get one that you like, put it in the right place, buy a dwarf or semi-dwarf, so it doesn't overwhelm your garden. And that was, that's the mature garden class. Any final questions? I'm afraid everybody's run away. No, we still have people in the room. Um, just gonna let them type in their questions in the chat if okay. they have any. Um, uh, we, uh, Christy Bloomberg raised her hand. Christy, can you type your question into the chat box? And by the way, we got through a whole hour without mentioning uh, November 3rd but don't forget to vote. <laughs> uh, Anita says, thank you very much for us. Uh, was very informative and your humor is still sharp. <laughs> and, and Anita is one of the best uh, weightlifters I know. So everybody be careful with Anita. Good news. Well, if there are no other questions, um, I just urge you all, just enjoy the heck out of your citrus trees. Think about if you, if you have a space that you're not using, maybe you should put one in. And you might wanna experiment with 
varieties you haven't tried before. Uh, but just remember, these trees are going to last a long time. Um, and so think long game. Do I have the right place and the right tree? And can I take care of it? So, um, Joe, there are now a few questions in the chat. Um, okay. What was the link if we see the Asian facilid? Oh, um, hang on a second. It's the exotic pest hotline, 800-491-1899. Okay, and then um, Fern is asking, where can I get a copy of the list of recommended stitches for Marin? You, if you check out the book, Pam Pierce, Golden Gate Gardening, there's her list there. I think the library also has the Marin Master Gardener list, book, book handbook itself. And then our website has lists as well. Um, uh, Gabriel asked, when did you say there would be a pruning class? We don't know yet. We're still working. It's in development. Um, Nancy's asking if if we are MMG, how do we get credit? We're supposed to take a survey, um, or you can. I don't know actually. I I send out the survey and a follow up email to everybody oh, when I send out the recording right. link, and, and so. Um, and Nancy, if you have more questions about that, uh, you can email me if that survey doesn't end. Uh, answer that question, you can email me and I can help you find that answer. And then um, Vicki uh, asks, any idea when they are going to open up MNG classes to start certification? Your mouth to God's ears, Vicki. Um, my guess is we're not doing it this spring. It's probably one more year out. Um, the Master Gardeners, you know, we can't do things in public safely yet. Um, and it's, it's a shame because it's a great class. I highly recommend um, everybody who didn't do well in science in high school and college, this is for you. You can actually learn just enough to think you know what you're doing and no one will know the difference. It's perfect. You know? It gives me and, a lot of hope, Joe. <laughs> well, believe me, I'm like two left brain thumbs. I mean, I, I took the class and I got through it. Anybody can get through it. Thank you. All right, everybody, I'm going to end the meeting soon. I'm just going to let you all know that I will send a follow up email with the link to the recording and some links from the Marin Master Gardeners as well as the survey. Please fill it out and send it back to the Marin Master Gardeners so they can keep making awesome presentations like this for you. Yeah, and be gentle on the evaluation. Come on now. <laughs> right. I'm let's sure they'll keep, be very gentle with you, Joe. Let, let's keep everything above average. That would be fine. All right. Well, <laughs> take care and have a wonderful fall. Bye bye.